Alright guys, we're back and this is going to be a 6L90 disassembly or teardown. This particular unit right here is out of a 2020 Chevy Express van 3500 6 liter gas and um, what this is doing is it has no forward, no reverse, no apply, no engagement, no nothing. Uh, and the fluid is in great shape. There's no check engine lights on or anything. I suspect that this is something that's broken in the output of the transmission because I have input speed sent signal. But we are gonna start tearing this down and we have it now mounted in the fixture. David, we're gonna open close in here. This is DT48989, a GM um, dealer tool for hanging them, for assembling and disassembling. This is the one I like to use. I don't really like to, I don't really like to throw a trans on its side. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take our hand bolts off. Start cracking the bottom ones loose. And obviously with this being a two wheel drive, sort of made a little bit of a mess. stuck on there so David if we'll get in here we're gonna go ahead and get our input shaft o-ring off of here the pump will not come off it's still on there so let's get that off now we're gonna go ahead and take off our torque converter housing bolts or bell housing This is not going to be a crazy in-depth thing. This is really more so just going to be to show you what's broken physically inside of this transmission. Because every electronically controlled transmission, like a six, like a six L ninety, such as this, even if there's an electrical fault, it will still move if the hardware and the pump is not damaged. So this is kind of this is kind of an odd one. Okay, already, if you look in here, David, kind of get on this. There's some flakes that are there. And that's not from that's not from torque converter. I think this is hard part failure, like I told you guys before. Okay, so you can't really you can see a little bit, but this is not like I said. This is not a torque converter failure. This has got to be hardware related. So we're gonna get our filter off. Probably wouldn't be big chunks in there. Then we'll go ahead here and get our pass through connector off. Lift up on the Tecum and just pull this. And then if you're tough. Just pull that out, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and get our bolts off and secure the control valve body solenoid assembly to the case. And these are an EP pen, special funky head on them. Okay. power tools to zip this off, but obviously going back on, we wouldn't do that. Sometimes I like to crack the valve body and kind of let it loosen it like that. When it's in a vertical position, you'll notice a lot more fluid will come out. Then I'm going to hold the valve body like this, the whole assembly, take my last bolt out, and then go like that. And the whole thing will just drop out. Up on the bench. All right. Now, 
we can go ahead and like this and take our torque converter housing or bell housing off. I can kind of tap the side sometimes like this to kind of jar it. You can just pull up and should come out. Okay, there's our, this is our pump assembly. I doubt there's anything wrong with this. Um, really, there's, there's probably nothing really wrong with this. Now we're gonna go ahead and lift out our one, two, three, four, and three, five reverse drum and our four, five, six, all as an assembly. Our drum is in really good condition. Just, you know, the clutches in here are nice and brown. They're not burned up. Got our gear set inside of this. Got a washer, got a sun gear. And then we have a bearing inside of our four, five, six clutch assembly or our turbine shaft. Then we have our four, five, six clutches. And really there's no, there's no damage to this. These really look in really good shape. Then we're gonna pull our four, five, six clutch hub out. This is in good shape, okay? If this, if this shaft snaps, you have no fourth, fifth, and sixth gear. The reason being is because this splines to this. Your four, five, six clutches. So when these clutches are come on and those clutches apply, this normally just spins freely. This now causes fourth, fifth, and sixth gear. So if this is broken, you got nothing. We're gonna get our clutch hub out, one, two, three, four clutch hub. This is in good shape. We're gonna get our two, six, and three, five reverse clutch hub out. This is in good shape. Now we're gonna get our center support out. I'm gonna go grab my uh, the special snap ring pliers. Why does that look a little funky? Huh. Okay, get in here. Get our snap ring out, and we'll release it inside of the case so it doesn't fly everywhere. Go on the table. Go ahead and get our center support and just yank him out. Pull our output gear set out. Yep, that's exactly what it is. See all the galling on this? Oh my gosh. That should not spin like that. Look at that. That should not spin. This is called the lube dam on the back of this output gear set assembly. Watch, the output shaft is gonna still be in there. Oh, look at that. This is exactly why this truck does not move forward or reverse. It's because of the broken weld on the output ring gear assembly. And see, normally when you have this, it will throw codes, okay, in a four-wheel drive truck. I've never seen this on a two-wheel drive truck, or van in this case, and I've never seen it not have codes. Normally, you will have codes for output speed sensor or transfer case correlation, but I guess on a two-wheel drive now, that being Bluetoothed, there you go. So, the bearing out here, back here is probably gonna be okay. Yeah, this bearing looks okay. But so, when this is sitting like this, in the trans, this is not gonna wanna spline to this right now, let's see. Can't get that, probably can't get it to spline. When this is just spinning, this entire, this piece gets galled up because this output gear set assembly is trying to spin, and with this broken and just sitting there spinning, it galls this up because your four, five, six clutch hub connects to this. Remember this guy from before? See how he splines into that? So when that's spinning, okay, and this is, this, this is also, this is, this is trying to spin. That just eats into the back of that ring gear assembly. So to fix this, you would need a new output output ring gear assembly, which comes with a new output shaft, and then a new output carrier gear set assembly. So there you go, guys. That is why this unit did not move forward or reverse, and there was also no codes in this. So this is 6L90 with a broken output shaft ring gear weld is the cause of this. And some people say 
okay, it's a defective weld because this is laser welded at the factory. I think it's partially that, but this is also an issue when people shift the vehicle from drive to park really quickly. And if you come around here, David, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So this is called your manual shift shaft assembly right here. Okay, and this is obviously connected to your range selector cable that's inside of the truck on, when you shift on the column. So if you look at how this sits in there, I'm gonna try to put this back without cheese grating my fingers. Okay. So you'll notice that I can turn this, this shaft right now. When the unit is in park, okay, the park hall catches on the lug on this output shaft. If you're spinning the vehicle and, and this is all still moving and you engage it in the park, and that park ball grabs that, that doesn't just not do anything. That power and that force has to go somewhere. So it actually will go into this ring gear. So this could have been a defect from the factory. This also could have been, you know, improper usage. So there you guys go. That's a 6L90 with no reverse, no forward, no nothing. And this is because of a failed output ring gear laser weld. So the Bluetooth output shaft really doesn't work too well.